Hello and welcome. Today we're learning about JavaScript errors and how to handle those errors. Let's get started. Today we're discussing JavaScript errors and error handling. JavaScript is, well, a little forgiving really. So if we put a variable name, and I'll just use variable equals, and I'll put my name in here as the data, and then we log to the console, that variable, that actually works. And that's kind of surprising, of course, because the way we've been learning JavaScript is to use const here beside the variable. So let's get rid of const one more time. And at the top, let's go ahead and put in strict mode. And this is an option in JavaScript. And now it will enforce some of these rules that we have learned. And this should throw an error. And yes, we get a reference error uh, error because variable is not defined. And of course, the way to fix that error is use JavaScript in the way we've been learning it, and that is use const or let before defining that variable name. And now the name variable is defined and equals the string data Dave, and use strict is okay with that. So let's leave use strict up there for the rest of this tutorial. Now let's look at some different error types in JavaScript. And we just saw the first one, and I'll go ahead and remove const again. And let's look at this error one more time. This is a reference error. It says variable is not defined. This is a more common error. Uh, you won't just get it for this, you'll get it for uh, other reasons as well. But a reference error is a fairly common error in JavaScript. Another type of error you may get, and let's go ahead and make a couple of changes here. I'll change this to object. Let's like the global object, and I'll put another dot, and then the create method, and now I'll come back and I'll just put those two dots together. This is my example of a syntax error. We've just added one extra dot. I'll save that, and you can see JavaScript logs a syntax error to the console log. Now this is a type of an error that we can't create. JavaScript is going, I mean, we can't catch and fix. Uh, JavaScript is going to catch this error as we are building our code. As we are writing our code, it will find syntax errors and it won't go ahead and evaluate the script further. So we catch these as we create the code. However, the other types of errors, including the reference error we previously looked at, can be caught in the code as it is executing. Again, the syntax error will just completely stop your code from executing. So JavaScript catches those up front. So we won't worry about catching or handling those. But the reference error, that is one we could catch. Another one, let's go back here and let's have const name and I'll just put my name back here. And then let's say we try to reassign name later, which we know we can't do because we use the const keyword, but I'll put Joe. And now I'll save that and we get a type error. This says assignment to constant variable. We've already assigned that constant variable. We can't do that again. That creates a type error. There could be other reasons we would get a type error also. It is a very common error in JavaScript. So syntax, uh, type, reference, and there are other error types as well. And I will link to the MDN error constructor notes below this video and you can look at those other types, but you will see these different constructor types um, log fairly frequently, at least I do, so I assume you will as well. Okay, now let's go ahead and create a function, and this is a little unusual because we are creating a function that will make an error on purpose. I'll make this an arrow function, and we'll call it make error. And inside this function, we'll have a try catch block, and that is we'll try the code inside this block, and you can see the curly braces here, so it has its own scope, and then we'll have catch, and we'll pass in an error if an error occurs as the parameter. Now this is a catch ID specifically, but we can refer to it, you'll often see it as an E or ERR or even the full word error. I'll just use ERR for now, and here's our catch block. So we'll create an error in this block, and I'll say const name equals Dave, and then I'll go ahead and try to reassign name to Joe again. And then in the catch block, I'll put console, and at this point we'll just use log, and we'll log the full error that gets passed to the catch block. 
Now we need to call our function down here. So I'll put make error and call the function. And now look, we get a type error log to the console, but it doesn't really look like an error, does it? Because it has that console log look. There's no red type or red background. So what we can do is change our console log statement to a console, here we go, error. And now let's take a look. And we have caught our type error, and it looks much more like an error now. It says assignment to constant variable at make error. And it is logging it like we would expect an error to look. And we have caught the error, so it won't crash our entire program. That's good. We can also use a warn if we wanted to. Let's go ahead and take a look at the console warn. And that gives a warning symbol. And it gives it that kind of goldish brown look. And it's a warning if we want to issue a warning in the console. But typically, you would have an error. Now, you can also, at least during development, if you're wanting to look at it this way, you can do a console.table. And notice it logs the properties of the error. We've got the stack property and the message property. And it gives some extra detail. Speaking of properties, let's look at it this way. And we'll go ahead and change this back to an error. This is the full error we're passing in, but we can just do the name and we get a type error. Or we can do the message property and we get assignment to constant variable. Or we can do the stack. And that gives most of the detail that we were used to seeing. I like to use the stack because I get all of that detail. But if you need to break out the different values with name and message, you can do that as well. Now, typically in this block, besides just logging the error to the console, which you might do during development, you might want a function that, say it's called log the error, and you're sending the error stack to that log so you can record it and look at the logs later on. That would be something to do with the error information besides just sending it to the console, just as an example. Uh, but what if, we don't just want this, we want to have a custom error. We can do that as well. So let's go down here and create a function and we'll just call it custom error. And we can pass in a message parameter to our custom error. And we can say this dot message equals message. And we can have this dot name equals custom error. And then just because we're used to that stack property as well, and we might have handlers already set up using it, we can say this.stack and use a template literal, and we can go this.name, and then colon, and then have this.message. And there is our custom error function. And now up here, instead of just getting a normal error, we can wait for something to occur. Maybe it's a user input or what, whatever kind of error we uh, are looking for. And we can throw a new custom, there we go, custom error. And we can pass in our message. This is a custom error. And now we can leave everything else the way it was because when it gets to the catch block, it's still going to refer to it as that parameter. But this is throwing an error that we've created. Let's save that. And now we can see when the error stack gets logged, it is this is a custom error. And of course that has the name and, oh, there we go, the name property and it will have the message property, just like we had before. We can break those out. Custom error, this is a custom error, and of course the stack has both. If we don't want to create our own custom error, essentially we constructed an error object here, we can use the generic built-in error constructor. And of course the other error types, like a syntax error, a reference error, a type error, those are also constructors and again, documented at MDN, which I'm providing the link below this video. But this is just the generic error constructor and we can throw a generic error and we can still pass in a message for the error 
and it will still have these properties. So let's go ahead and just throw new error and I'll save this code. And we still get the same output because, well, it didn't have the name custom error anymore. It's just the name error because it's a generic error constructor, but that's what we passed in. So instead of saying this is a custom error, I'll just say this is an error. And you can see the stack property still works with this error as well. Try catch blocks can also include finally blocks. Finally blocks come at the end and they execute no matter what. So if an error is thrown, the finally block will still execute after the catch block. If no error is thrown, the finally block will still execute as well. So let's go ahead and look at an example of this. And I'm just going to put in a console log statement in the finally block and I'll say finally. So we know we're in the finally block when we get there. Uh, above the try, so for this whole block, I'm going to add a little bit here. I'll create a uh, iterator variable and set it equal to one. And I'll say while the iterator variable is less than or equal to five, execute this block. And I'm going to grab the whole try catch finally block and just put it inside our while loop. And now we'll need to increment our iterator in the finally or uh, our while loop would never end because it would always be less than five. So, or equal to, it would never even be equal to five. It would always be one because it would never be incremented. So we definitely have to increment the iterator. And in the try, we're not going to throw an error there just on purpose. Let's say if the iterator divided by two has a remainder that is not equal to zero, then we could throw if I could spell, we could throw a new error and I'll just make it generic and I'll say odd number because that's what it would be if the remainder was not equal to zero when we divided by two, we'd have an odd number. And so our message for the error is odd number. It's a generic error. And of course the stack will combine both the name and the message. So we could just remove those two lines and just look at the stack and if we don't throw that new error, if the new error is thrown right here, the rest of the code in the try block won't execute. It'll throw the error and immediately go to the catch block. So we don't really have to worry about having an else to our statement because it will only reach line 10 in our code if no error is thrown. So on this line, I'm going to log to the console even number. So we'll either have an even number or an odd number. If we have an odd number, it's going to go to the catch block and then the finally block. If we have an even number, it's going to skip the catch block and go straight to the finally block. So let's go ahead and execute this and see what we get. And as we look in the console, I'll need to scroll up to see the entire thing. We start out with the odd number of one and then we go to the finally block. So we have our odd number error and we look at the full stack and finally. Then we have the number two, which is even. And it goes straight to the finally block with no error. The number three once again creates an error and then the finally block. Number four, even number, and then straight to the finally block. And at the end, number five creates an error because it's an odd number and goes to the finally block. So I hope that helps you understand how the try catch finally block pattern works. Finally will execute no matter what, whether there's an error or not. Catch will only execute if there is an error. And if there is an error in the try block, any code following that error will not execute. Any code that remains in the try block will not execute if an error happens before it reaches that code. So this line 10 only executed when we had an even number. And that is how try, catch, and finally work. Hi, I'm Dave, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to keep striving for daily progress instead of perfection. 
Subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be alerted when I post new tutorials. I'll see you next time.